Good day to you, my friends. My name is Paul, and today I'm going to be taking a closer look at this new video card from PowerColor. This is the PowerColor Devil 13, a.k.a. the Radeon HD 7990. <laughs> We're going to start off with a quick look at the retail box in this gold foil type. They've done a pretty good job with the packaging for this card. This is a dual GPU video card, which means in the HD 7990, you actually get two GPUs on the same card, two Radeon HD 7970s. Uh, they run at 925 megahertz, and there's also a dual BIOS button on the card, which you can push to overclock both GPUs to 1000 megahertz. Here's another quick look at the box, and on the top we have a faux wax seal. This is actually plastic, but it's made to look like wax. Opening it up, we can see another Double 13 logo. A couple little inserts here, and this one in particular is quite interesting because it has a real detailed layout of the video card. A few highlights uh, from this insert. You have an ultra-efficient fan design. It's a triple slot cooler with three individual fans, two 92mm and one 80mm. It's got a TDP of 550 watts, and that's just for the video card itself. Uh, for your overall system, you're going to need at least an 850 watt power supply. You get a 10-piece, 6mm U-shaped heat pipe design with a massive copper water block at the bottom to conduct heat off of both GPUs. A huge copper base, again, to cover the GPUs as well as some of the power delivery and MOSFETs. Uh, speaking of power delivery up here, there's a multi-phase power design, 12 plus 2 plus 2 phases. MOSFET heat sink coverage, uh, you get voltage measurement points on the board itself, as well as an LED lighting system that will indicate the load on the GPU as you're using the card. Next up, let's take a look, look at accessories and box contents. We, of course, have a driver installation disc, which you should not use. You should download the latest drivers from the AMD website or the PowerColor website. You also have a little pouch here that folds out. Again, another little faux wax seal right there. Uh, this has some warranty information as well as this little fold-out booklet, which is all black, white, and red all over for the power color with, uh, you know, your installation instructions and getting started, all that good stuff. If you've never installed a video card before, I'm guessing if you're purchasing this, this particular video card that you are familiar with video cards because this, this, this isn't really an entry-level card. This is called the Power Color Power Jack. I believe that's what they call this. Uh, this is actually a stand, as this card weighs just about four pounds, which is pretty hefty for a card. They've provided you with this, which you can uh, set on the bottom of your case, and then the card can actually rest on top of it, providing a lot of extra support and taking some of the strain off of your PCI bracket. So that is a very nice item to be included. We also have this little pouch, which is kind of a nice little screwdriver kit. It's actually got a bunch of different uh, heads on there, each of these little inserts has two different heads so you got flathead Phillips head got some torques as well as some hex uh, connectors on there and uh, it's even sort of slightly modular because you put the uh, insert in like that and you can push down this and actually just extend that however far you want and it locks in place so it's a nice little add on there little, little tool kit uh, that's it for the recovery chamber next we have the equipment chamber which is all of your maybe slightly more standard accessories. You have a flexible crossfire bridge right there, which uh, is definitely a triple slot space because this is a triple slot card. So if you happen to have enough money to buy two of these, you can set them up in crossfire X. And it's nice to know that you now actually have cap the capacity for quad crossfire X now that there's a 79 90 out, at least Quad Crossfire X with the 7000 series. Here's a little power adapter, so that's simply a 6-pin to 8-pin PCI Express power adapter. If your power supply has enough juice and not enough of the 8-pin connectors, you can use that. You also have some display adapters here, which are always nice to have. Well, look at that. They've actually provided you three of those 6-pin to 8-pin adapters. Three 8-pin PCI Express power connectors required for this card. Uh, which is a lot, but bear in mind, there are two, two GPUs in there. Uh, you also get a mini display port to standard display port adapter. Those are always nice to have. You get two display port outs on this card, mini display ports, I should say. You have a DVI to VGA adapter. If you're using this adapter with this video card, I'm going to personally hunt you down and, uh, you know, probably won't be very happy with you when I find you. 
I'll say don't use a VGA. Anyway, this is also a display port to a uh, dual link DVI connector, and that's also very handy to have because this is an active adapter, as you can see, active right there, which means that the dual link DVI via display port can handle a higher resolution, such as 2560 by 1600. And now on to the Devil 13 itself. As you can see, the entire card is enclosed in a shroud. It's got an open area around each side. It's not an enclosed shroud, but it is made of anodized aluminum, red and black. And uh, as you can see, the 292 millimeter fans and the 80 millimeter fan right there at the center. Flipping around here to the inputs and outputs, again, triple slot card as you can see, and the card itself extends a bit beyond the length of your typical PCI Express bracket, so bear that in mind. Here at the back we have a red button. I always want to push the red button when we see it. Red button is the dual BIOS button, and uh, engaged, it will overclock the card automatically via a secondary BIOS to 1000 megahertz. When it's disengaged, the two GPUs will run at their stock frequency of 925 megahertz. You also have your video outs down here at the end. Uh, this video card can support up to six displays uh, natively, although you will need some DisplayPort 1.2 additional hardware in order to daisy chain an extra display. You can do five displays uh, directly from the card. So you have two dual link DVI outs, HDMI, and then two DisplayPort outs. I'm also going to flip around to this side here so you guys can check out the power delivery area, which is down here at this end. Three 8 pin power connectors, as previously mentioned, required to power the card. Also, here, if you look really close right there, are your voltage read points. They're a little bit difficult to access, but if you want to get some more detailed uh, voltage reads and you have a multimeter, multimeter, you can do some delicate soldering down there and get access to those. Another feature I wanted to point out back here, uh, well, you also get a full uh, back plate that extends the entire back length of the card. It's also black, has a nice chrome HD 7990 logo down there at the bottom and uh, scattered, well, a few down here and then a few more up here, you actually have LEDs and those are those uh, GPU load LEDs so they will light as load is applied to either of the GPUs and it uh, looks pretty cool. They're nice bright white LEDs. I'm going to take a closer look here and also show you some uh, close-up shots of the card, but uh, since we were talking about the uh, cooler itself, as you notice under here, you can see some of those copper heat pipes sticking out. Again, 10 individual copper heat pipes, 5 per GPU, and then you have a massive aluminum fin array, which extends from this end of the card all the way across. Gets plenty of airflow from all three of these uh, fans as they're directing air down over the GPU, and they do ramp up in speed as the card gets load put on it. Uh, but I am happy to say that they are also quite effective. And in fact, the temperatures in my tests uh, were often even better than a reference 7970 video card by itself. Also, of course, down here you have your main PCI Express connector. PCI Express Gen 3 compatible, of course. And uh, for my benchmarks in a few minutes, I am using a fully PCI Express Gen 3 compatible system uh, based on a Z77 platform. A few other important specs for the card, again, size and weight are a factor, so bear in mind it is just shy of 12 and a half inches long, triple slot cooler, and again weighs just under four pounds. So um, you will probably want to install that uh, extender to pr provide some extra support for the card if you are going to be installing this in a non-vertical system. Now this is using the same Tahiti cores from the AMD Radeon HD 7970, which means at the default spec, it's there, each GPU is going to run at 925 megahertz. If you go ahead and enable that BIOS 2 option, you can jump up to 1000 megahertz. It also features two banks of 2084 stream processors, uh, two banks of three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, so that's a total of six gigabytes of GDDR5 memory total, and 5,500 megahertz is your memory speed. Memory bus is two times 384 bits, and the memory is running on a 384-bit interface. Next up, as promised, I have some benchmarks for you guys, and I'm happy to say that this card has performed extremely well. It is not even necessarily just a trophy piece for folks who want the best of the best video card, but it's actually living up to some of the expectations. For comparisons, I put it up against a Radeon HD 7970, that is the stock single GPU version of this card, and please bear in mind that that card's running at the stock speed of 925 megahertz. This one, I had the button pushed, so it's running at 1000 megahertz, so we actually got more than double performance in some of the benchmarks. Benchmarks. Also, I wanted to point out that by popular demand, I have included Battlefield 3 in this set of benchmarks. And that said, let's take a look at our test bed. We're running on a fully PCI Express Gen 3 compatible system. It's a Z77 platform with a 3570K processor. And here are your benchmarks. <music> Thank you.
that is going to wrap it up for this video, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed, and uh, if you can manage to get your hands on one of these, it is a fantastic video card, and it could just destroy just about any video game you can throw at it right now. That's going to wrap it up. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.